Hey, good morning, everybody. Rick here with Hit and Run Candlesticks. This is Monday, uh, November. Wow, November 2nd, 2020. This year is just about finished. Hey, I was watching the news this morning, last night as well, and uh, it looks like COVID cases are on the rise. That could definitely cause a shift in the market. We could be getting back into some of those FNGU stocks, so stay-at-home type stocks, uh, big tech. So we're going to keep a big eye on the big tech here. It's what's led us up uh, since uh, first of the year, pretty much. And uh, we've had a little bit of a pullback here, so we'll be watching those stocks pretty closely. So uh, Friday, the SPY came down, and this is the third day. Friday was the third day that it landed at about that 326 area right in there. Uh, Friday, we did peak a little bit lower. Uh, we put a nice little wick on that, giving us a hammer-type candle. The, wick, the wick's a little high on the top to be a perfect hammer, but that uh, is a hammer-type candle. This morning, it looks like that we're gapping up a little bit here around that 330.90. We could possibly, very possibly, see a move uh, up to the T-line, and of course the T-line is going to drop just a little bit today because price is down here. And we could see a move up to the trendicator, up into something like that. Now, being Monday and all, and tomorrow being the election, uh, who knows? Who knows? Stay on your toes. Uh, be cautious. I honestly would not be crazy long or short in the market. Uh, with that with that presidential unknown out there. Okay, so let's look at some trade ideas today. And what I'm going to do is we're, Saturday, uh, actually it was Sunday, I was a little late getting it out. Uh, Sunday, I put uh, stocks to ponder for the weekend out there. And I'm going to look at those again because I think every one of them is, uh, well, not every one. But it looks like they're moving up a little bit this morning, and they look pretty good. Or at least they did a few minutes ago. So right now, here's uh, T. Telray. Telray was on the list this past uh, Sunday. And, uh, well, it looks like we're opening up. That was a little bit higher earlier this morning. Looks like we're opening up around that 580 area. It's currently 7, 10 after 7 East Coast time. So there's still plenty time. Uh, for for the uh, price to change here, okay? Uh, whoops, didn't mean to move that. All right, so around 580 is looking where it's opening. I'm still looking for a buy in the buy box. If I see positive trading, and positive trading doesn't always have to be up. It could just be an inside day showing that it's holding. So right now we have a low a high, we've made a higher low, and we're holding in here a uh, couple of candles. Uh, one's a bullish body, one's a not so bullish body. I wouldn't call it bearish, but we have a nice little, uh, not a, and it's not a perfect tweezer bottom, but a pair of nice wicks down here um, holding us up right at that 50 period moving average. So um, it's possible I look at a buy uh, in this area here. Uh, nothing's going to change about the target or the stop if if uh, if you went and saw uh, Saturday's video then you know you know what those I'm sorry Sunday's video uh, you know what the stops and, and targets are. GE is another one. Uh, GE looks like we're opening up in the wick area up here. Now this is one of these stocks that I'm considering a little longer term uh, don't know if I'm going to buy it today because I don't know what the price action is going to do today. And having the election tomorrow, I, I just I'm just not overly interested in being in a ton of trades. Uh, that doesn't mean I won't buy a couple. Pretty choppy price action right in here. So what we're going to look at is positive trading. I think if I, because I'm considering this longer term, I don't really have to buy it down cheap or anything like that. So if I see this start to move over the 200 period moving average, uh, there's a good chance I start picking up a little bit of GE. KRE is another one, 
and it looks like it's opening up uh, above the buy box. So we're getting a little bit of a gap up here. Now, the way I might trade this is watch that 15-minute uh, chart. So here, let me draw this up there. So watch the 15-minute chart, and the candle's gapping up. So this, let's see here, this will be the daily candle, the end of Friday. And here's the current can or the the um, 15 minute candle. Sorry. What I'm going to do is once that 15 minute candle is established, I'm going to put a line just like that, and then I will look at um, anything above that line as bullish. So if I it doesn't matter if it's a down move. Now you guys all know that I like to buy on positive trading which means buyers coming in to me. So here's a case where we open up. If we if I start to see it move up higher, especially breakout, this is where I might place an entry on that KRE, and this will be my stop. As price moves up, then I will move my stop up. So right now, uh, I'm looking at 45.90, 52.80, on the a weekly chart. Again, there's a bit more information on the Sunday charts to ponder uh, video. Wells Fargo, you can see Wells Fargo is gapping up a little bit. Uh, this still has a long way to go before it gets into an uptrend up here. It needs to be above the T-line, above the trend indicator, and above the 50 period moving average. Uh, but it is one that I am considering. It's not my typical buy and I'm looking for 23.85 ish, 25.70, 29.50 up here as targets, 21.15 as a stop. If I do place a buy here and get it as it moves up, I will move that stop up to protect. Um, yeah, but it, it's still in a little bit of downtrend. It's going to need to, it's going to need to move up there before it gets uh, up to be a good buy. What I do like about this chart are the three small-bodied candles down here, gap down, and then a lot of indecision. So generally what we look at when you see indecision, doji-type candles, small-bodied candles after a gap down, the direction uh, of the move, in this case, the move is bullish. You can see we're gapping up. Then that's where I'm going to look at possibly being long. Now, if it was moving down... Uh, below those, that's where you'd possibly want to be short. CGC, we've sure been watching the pop, pot, pot stocks, and CGC is one we made a lot of money on back here. I'm looking to get back in that, and you can see it gapping up now. This, this is, this is going to be a hot trade possibly today. So uh, I will be looking at buying a little bit of CGC in here, and then we're going to watch up here. Uh, I've got these marked with uh, something like this, the weekly 200 up here. So let's go to the uh, weekly chart. And this is a weekly rounded bottom breakout, and that's the 200. So that becomes a very nice target direction. And that 2340 area is about 23% uh, away. That makes for a pretty nice swing trade. Again, take a look at Sunday's video. Um, and that might, might give you a little more insight as well. FITB, this is another uh, nice, I don't know why that's right there. Let's uh, make sure, okay. Um, FITB, we're opening up inside the buy box, a little bit of a gap up. That becomes a nice buy. Stop right here, 22.90, target 26.64. Uh, Let's go look at that weekly chart. There's the weekly. Uh, see, we're in that weekly uh, rounded bottom breakout. And uh, with an entry, oh, say 2360 maybe, uh, 12, 12.9%. 12 with a little bit of follow through, looking at 20.5% up here on uh, FITB. Uh, PACW is a nice chart. Uh, in a, in a daily rounded bottom breakout, here we've rallied up uh, through the 50 period moving average to the dotted deuce, pulling back for a higher low, then running up 
on a breakout toward the 200 uh, simple up here. A nice pullback, found support at the 50 period moving average with a bullish and inverted hammer, bullish engulf, and then follow through Friday holding above the T line. Right now, it looks like we're opening up at pretty much where a close on Friday of about 19 and a quarter in the buy box here. 2150, 2436 uh, are the target directions. Uh, here's the weekly chart. And uh, a breakout of 2150 gives you 2430 up here at the 50, uh, 50 period moving average on the weekly chart. It also grabs these highs over here, this little, this little pop over here back in uh, June. Uh, CRUS, sorry for the, for the sniffles here. Uh, looks like I've got a fall time cold. Uh, came and clobbered me this weekend. Uh, CRUS, great little bullish engulf. Great support right here. Good price action on the support. Low, high, double bottom, and then boom, we broke out of that at high with a big bullish engulf. Nice inside day. Friday looks great. Uh, looks like we're opening up uh, just about where we closed Friday inside the buy box. Now, over this line right here, well, anywhere in here I think is a good buy. And, and I'll be using 66.30 as a stop if I choose to buy it in here. Um, above 69.75, that puts us at the upper end of this box above this little magenta line. That could really position uh, CRUS for a pop up to about 73. With, uh, with bullish follow-through, doesn't have to be the next day or anything, but with bullish follow-through here, I see this going to 78.70 for a swing trade. So this is why I'm looking at this on my watch list. NXPI, uh, nice little rally up, broke out of these highs. Uh, this res resistance area we broke out, this now becomes support. We've pulled all the way back to the 50 period moving average. Nice little doji, bullish in golf, jammed it right back up above that 50 period moving, I'm sorry, T line, plus that 131.60 resistance area. This remains bullish now above that line because this is now support. Looks like we're opening up at the upper end of the buy box here that still makes it a buy if you buy it too high we just want to raise our stop up so that's something i'll be thinking about looking for 145 and then up here to 170. the problem with trading today is do you seriously know who's going to win the election now don't let your emotions overload your brains okay seriously Look, I know everybody's got uh, this person's going to win and that person's going to win. For good reason, for bad reasons, it doesn't matter. But don't let that get in the way of good business sense. Trading requires business sense. So, um, you know, if you're pro one side or the other and you're buying this stock because you believe that, you know, whatever stock you're buying, uh, because this person's going to win, think twice on that. Think twice. Really think about it. Do you even want to be trading right now? Or would you rather wait till uh, the election's over? I know we might be afraid to sit on the sidelines because what if the market gaps up? I promise you, if the market gaps up, just wait a few days. You'll get a chance to buy anything you're looking at. Uh, there's always pullbacks. The market is always giving us another chance to trade. I think right now, trade smart, trade business wise. We'll see you guys in the trading room. You guys all take care. Good luck this week. Have fun. Thank you.